This is Paul's final instruction to the church in Romans. And uh, he's uh, talking about living in the last days. So how many know if he gave them final instructions? We should probably pay, and, and, and this is the holy word of God that was written for us. How many know we should pay attention to something labeled final instructions? That means in the final days you're going to be dealing with this, and we are. And so I'm going to address a lot of things today on those lines. Here, Romans chapter 12, verse 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. It's not hard. It's just what's required of you. So you, you know, uh, there's some really dumb sayings going around, like when you murder babies, they say it's your body, your choice, and you don't have any say about the body that's in you. So come on, let's just not be ignorant. But when you do things that doesn't line up with the Word of God, the enemy will always make sure you have an excuse. So when you first realize this isn't your body anymore, and if you really believe the kingdom of God lives in you you're going to start treating your body different. Right? Yeah. Be not conformed to this world. So, uh, I hate to break it to you, that means, guess what? That a believer could be conformed to this world. It means the enemy could trick you, deceive you, and you could make choices, <laughs> and you could end up being just as worldly as the next worldly guy after you've been transformed. Otherwise, he wouldn't tell you not to be conformed to it. Right. Big smile. So you have a choice in what you do every day and how you respond. Now, the great thing is that God's for you. He's not against you. He, greater is he that's within you than he that's within the world. You know, all the great messages I've been preaching on that, God's with you. But ultimately, every day you have a choice to make when your feet hit the floor. His mercies are new every morning. You have a choice. Are you going to conform to the world? Or are you going to study the word of God and start conforming more to the scriptures that you read and the sermons that you hear? Does it mean you're going to be perfect instantly that day? No. None of us in here are. We're all, we're all, we're all striving to act and, and be more like Jesus. But guess what? It's not all work. You get when you act more like Jesus, you get more joy, more peace, uh, you know, more love. You get all the stuff that makes up that the world's trying to get through all the fake stuff. You get the real stuff. Right. Man, you don't get much better than that. I don't know about you, but I, you know, I like being happy. And I'm not talking about because it comes from happenstance. My happiness is rooted in the joy of God as he is who he says he is. He can do what he said he can do. Now there's times that I'm troubled, that I'm perplexed. I, well, I've been through a lot here lately. And on every side, it's been pressure. But guess what? My God is still faithful. He doesn't fail. He doesn't shrink. And he doesn't change his mind. And he changes not. By the way, if you're, if you're praying, folk, combine your faith with mine. We need some miracles and finances. I already took the offering. I ain't taking the offering. I ain't asking for nothing. I'm just asking you to combine your faith with my faith. God is faithful. Got it? Good. Let's move on. Yes. There we go. <laughs> so, uh, be not conformed to this world, but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind. That doesn't mean that you read the Bible one time and you transformed your mind. Renewing it means it's something you've got to actively do every day. Right. You know, I can tune an engine and make it run as sweet as it can be. And after some use, it's going to need some new tuning. Because yes. life is going to have an effect on it. Use is going to change some things in it. You're in the world. You're going to go through some things, and you're going to have to renew your mind, reshore. A hundred-year-old house doesn't doesn't look as nice as it did a hundred years ago. Exactly. You're probably going to have to go do some tuck pointing, like we need to do around here. <laughs> but do y'all see what I'm saying? But how do you do it? You put the word of God in. You renew your mind. If you did, if the enemy is attacking you on a certain subject, you should be. Filling your mind full of scripture on that subject. So that your mind is renewed. 
so that you will not be conformed to this world. See how it goes? Yes. This is all free, by the way. Look, we're not even to your scriptures yet. But this is doctrine. This is the things I've taught you, correct? Right. That's what doctrine is. Me teaching you the word of God. Yes. Yes. You know what? You know how I can tell when someone's in trouble? They start sentences off. Let me tell you what I think. I know that sounds horrible, doesn't it? But just stop and think about it. Do I start Do I start a conversation off when you come to me for counsel? Well, let me tell you what I think. I go, no. This is what the Word says. This is what the Word says. This is what the Word says here. This is what the Word says there. Because it's the only thing that doesn't change. It's the only thing that will renew your mind. It's the only thing that will get you through to the other side. So, renewing of your mind that you may prove what is good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. So you're proving to who? All the world around you that the word works and God is who he says he is and can do what he said he can do. Some of them know the guy I used to be and they're like, there must be a God in heaven because he doesn't act the same way. I remember years ago on a Spirit Riders dinner ride, 25 years ago, some people knew me when I was an outlaw biker, and this guy walked up to me, and he was testing. He ended up getting saved, and he took an ice cream cone, and he put it out of my nose like a cigarette. And years ago, I would have just, and I smiled, and I said, are you done yet? And I wiped it off, and I didn't have any emotion that I showed him. And I prayed for him earnestly. Sometimes I think, man, that might be with my loved one better then. I don't know, but I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm attaining to keep it anyways. Do, do you see what I'm saying? And that guy ended up getting saved. He just want, he, he didn't believe that anybody could change us that much. And it wasn't in me. It was the God that was in me. If I hadn't been, if I'd have been conformed to the world, I still punched him in the nose. Come on, I, I'm, I'm making it. Is the scripture not coming alive for you this morning? Are you seeing it? Can you relate with it? I mean, that this is who we are, right? This is what we do. This is the word working in us. Can, can we not say amen? amen? So, for I say through the grace given unto me to every man is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to. You know, pride comes before the fall as you learn in humility class and all that on Wednesday nights. Uh, when someone starts thinking there's something, they're ready. And unfortunately for me, I, I can see the crash coming way before they can. I'm like, you're just about to get in big trouble. You know, and even with the things of God, when you start thinking you've arrived, you're already in trouble. Matter of fact, I joke all the time these days. I say I should have wrote all my books whenever I was a young preacher because I knew everything then. Because the older I get with God, the less of that I know. I just know that he loves me and that he's faithful and his word is true. And if I work the word of God, it works. That's all I know, but that's all I need to know. Come on, are you with me? So, but to think soberly, according as God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. Now you've heard me say this, that measure of faith, I've thought of this from teaching on faith, is a five gallon bucket. So every man got a five gallon bucket. So don't be going around everybody else. He got more faith than me. No, he's exercised his faith more than you. There's a difference. Everybody has the same amount of faith. If I go to a gym, we all have the same 20 pound weight. But if I go in and I do three sets of 10 with that 20 pound weight every other day, all of a sudden I'm going to have something you don't have. I'm going to have something called muscles. Right. And you're still going to have spaghetti arms. <laughs> Amen? Amen. And so, if you exercise it, more, you're going to have it. So every man gets the same. So can you, you know, if anybody ever told you, well, you don't have no faith. Well, that's a lie from the pits of hell. Everybody has faith. Amen. What they need to say is, are you, you know, the Bible talks about mixing, but are you, are you using your faith? Are you applying it? Are you exercising it? 
The Bible says, out of the words of your mouth, you're snared. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. What are you speaking over your life? Hearing, faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. So you need to start learning to speak it because but don't be thinking you got more you hear all that in a bag of chips. Everybody got the same bag of measure of faith. Everybody's got a five gallon bucket. You just got to learn to start exercising. Amen. And when you do, you start moving things. Okay, we're there. We got that far. <laughs> For as we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office. So, you know, everybody, I, he's pastor, I'm prophet, I'm this, I'm that. If you're hung up on titles, you're already hung up. Right, yeah. Just tell him. We're all in the same body. Amen. You know, a head wouldn't do any good without any feet and hands. Right. Your, your, your hand couldn't do anything without the nerve endings. Every joint supply. You ain't nothing special. You're just part of the whole package that makes it work. Right. Or ministry, let us wait on ministry. He that teaches, teaches. He that exhorts, exhorts. He that gives a limited explosion. I'm not going to teach on all this today. He that rules with diligence. He that shows mercy with service. Let love be without dissimulation. That means don't be any favorites, no clicks. Now, there has been some accusations made here likely that there's cliques at Broken Chains Church. There's not any cliques. There's people that gets offended that chooses to hold on to offenses and instead uh, choose not to walk in love. If you've been here a long time, you will know that I've worked super hard for there not to be any cliques. Right. Now, do all personalities get along? No. <laughs> you know, would a toe do very good trying to hang out with an ear? <laughs> so why are you trying to be upset because your personality doesn't jive with another person's personality it still means you're some part of the same body you see what I'm saying I mean that's just silliness to try to think oh, I'm a toe and I want everybody to upset me in the ear party people get so hung up on things Instead of just learning to love each other. Right. I bet that ear is pretty thankful for that toe when he, whenever he gets stubbed and the ear don't, you know. <laughs> Praise God for your toe. I feel for you. <laughs> but that scream really hurt me. <laughs> Abhor that which is evil, cling to that which is good. In today's world, it's so PC correct. We have gotten so far from this, it makes me sick. If I'm going to preach straight, I'm going to preach real straight this morning. There is nothing. Evil is not a person. It's a thing. It's a spiritual condition. And I love the people, but the evil that's going on, I absolutely hate it. I loathe it. It's the only thing I'm allowed to do that as a believer. But I hate murder. I hate murdering babies. I hate all the evil that comes with all of that. I hate all the stuff that comes in together. And I'm going to pray against it. I'm going to stand in faith and shake heaven for it. I'm not going to accept it. Amen. Nowhere did it say I had to. Well, you've got to love them. i got to love the person. The person is being as, as deceived as I once was. But that does not mean I love the thing that's controlling them. Right. And there's a difference. And if you can't separate the two, you do have a problem. Right. Right. My mama was the first person that taught me how to do it. I'm going to be honest. Because she was able to love me without condoning me. Wow. And she did a fabulous job. I knew that I was loved. I knew that nothing I could do could change it. And my church family did the same thing. And even when I was being buffeted, they found a way to love me without condoning me. They even knew it. They didn't hang out with me when I was being buffeted. But there was no doubt in my mind that they loved me. Right. Now, did the enemy try to convince me otherwise? Absolutely. But there's a difference when you condone people. Oh, it'll be okay. Yeah, they shouldn't have done that to you. Did that help them one bit? No. It did not. No, it didn't. 
Be kindly affectionate one to another. Now, who are we talking about here? Who are we talking about here? Who are we talking about here? Christians. Our brothers and sisters in Christ. We ain't talking about lost people. We love them. We want to see them get saved. But we're, to, we're, we're this is not for them. This is for the body. In honor, preferring one another. I taught a whole long message. Anybody remember what the title of it was? The love, and then there was another one that I taught. I'll let you all know. What is it? Do-gooders. Do -gooders. Oh, yeah. I did a whole series, two years worth, on being a do-gooder. How many know when you honor and prefer somebody, it has an effect upon them? Yes. But it's a choice. Does honoring and preferring people come natural to you? No. No, no your flesh wants to act a different <laughs> way, doesn't it? Your flesh wants to slap them upside the head. It doesn't want to honor them. Come on. You've got to conform it. You do it by renewing of the word. How would Jesus do this? He would pray for them. He would bless them. Bless God. You've got to help me and teach me how. Okay. I will, son. But for honoring one another, not slothful in business. A whole lot of people with fishes on their side need to learn that. Fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. Rejoicing in hope. I love hope. God will anticipate the promises of God are yes and amen. Patient in tribulation. Why did they got to keep putting this stuff in there? I am tired of tribulation. I'm just going to be honest. I am tired of going through it. But guess what? I'm going to still go through it because there is an end. No season lasts forever. Right, that's right. It's biblical. Now, people tried to convince Job that his season lasts forever. He should have just cursed God and died. People, people read Job and they think it happened in just a blink of an eye. It was a long period. He went through several different seasons, and each one seemed to get worse than the last one. And every comforter he had was pretty much telling him, man, well, I don't know what you did, but you did something bad. You should just curse God and die now. And you know what, Satan, when he gets you on that kind of rope, when it's, a, when it's a demonic accusation, that's what he tries to get you to do. Just take your life. Yes. But when you the only way you can do that is if you stop believing the word of God and stop renewing your mind. <coughs> I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. Come on. You're the head and not the tail. You are above and not beneath. Amen? Amen. Continuing instant in prayer, distributing to the necessity of the saints, giving to hospital. I mean, we'll take care of the poor. But first here, uh, I want to point out something that's going to get me in trouble. Did it say there to take care of every person that didn't want to work? Didn't say every person that walked in the church doors asking for their electric to be paid for. Didn't say take care of them. The necessity of saints. So first they have to belong to that body. To necessity is does it continue between their life and death? Not popular, but let's just say the scripture for what it says. That was free. <laughs> Give them the husband. Bless them which persecute you. Bless and curse not. So we're to bless them which persecute us. Bless and curse not. Rejoice with them and you rejoice. Weep with them and weep. Be of one same mind toward one another. Mind not high things. But condescend to men of low estate. Be not wise in your own conceit. Recompense to no man evil for evil. So we're not to give evil for evil. We're to bless them that hurt us. Amen? Amen. If you jump all the way down here, little verse 19, it says, Do not avenge yourselves. Uh, do not give place to wrath. Remember, so this is what we've always concentrated on. But it's okay to hate evil. 
But evil is not a person. When you associate it with a person, you've already fallen into a trap of the enemy. You've taken offense with a person and you've fallen into sin. Okay? Therefore, if thy enemy hunger, feed him. Now we're supposed to feed those that are hungry, whether they're brothers, saints, or whatever. But that's not the same as taking care of their necessities. Give him drink, and so doing, thou shalt coals of fire on his head. That means you're going to love him when he knows you shouldn't. And it's going to convict him. Be not overcome evil, but overcome evil with good. Most people have been overcome with evil. They're, all they can do is think about how retaliate and how wrong it is. Right. When you should be just doing so much good that they don't know what to do with you. Right. That was free. That brings us to our BCC message of the day. Final instruction. So how many know we are to love people? Amen. But what happens when their body gets cancer? Do you just let cancer grow and just say, kumbaya, they're part of the body, I'm to love them, we'll just let them keep on killing us? Nope. Or do you cut the cancer off? Do you think anybody likes to cut cancer off their own body? What about the head? Do you think the guy that's in charge and spent his whole life loving them likes to cut anybody off? Yeah. But if you don't cut it off, what happens? Yeah, and it will keep killing and zapping the life out of that body until there's nothing left. Right. And the scripture has a lot to say about it, so we're going to look at it. Because what do we base our whole life on? The Word of God. So Romans 16, 17. Romans 16, 17 on your sheets. It says, Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them. So when you mark somebody... You can make note of it. You say, there's no guessing, is there? Come on. It's the Word of God. I'm not making it up. I'm going to show you more and more places. When you mark them, you make it plain, don't you? Yeah. Which do what? Talk Cause divisions yeah. and offenses. Now, if you've been around here very long, I have a bad habit. I admit it. Most people would say it probably makes me a good pastor, but before I deal with stuff, I will exhaust every other option. If you've seen me deal with something in public, there's usually 15 years before it, before I dealt with it. Right. Oh, yeah. That you didn't see. Yeah. But People that cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which you have learned. And then it goes on to say, which nobody wants to do this, when you turn somebody over to bump them, what's it, which we've talked about that in depth in other scriptures coming up to here, it says do what? Avoid them. Because what are they going to do? What does cancer do? Spreads. Spreads and, and kills and destroys. So, and we're going to look in depth so you don't have any... Uh, questions about divisions and offenses here in a moment. But uh, people that try to break divisions up are they, they they usually have a story to tell, don't they? How many know that Satan is an angel of life? And he works in part truths. He'll take something that's partly true and twist it and pervert it and if it's not bringing you towards God, it's taking you away from God. Right, right, right. And here's the other difference. Other than a few little details, you've never heard me tell anything. Right. Throughout 15 years, have you? Yep. We pray, we love, we move on, which is what we're going to continue to do. But we're at a 
place where God is breaking out in revival and you don't have time for people that have chose to not keep their minds right, keep their hearts right, that consumed the stuff and, and, and have been talked to one-on-one, -on -one, two and three, in front of the church. Every biblical protocol has been followed. Right. And when they choose not to follow God, when they choose to be used of the enemy, it says you mark them that are trying to cause divisions and offenses. Right. And then you avoid them. Right. Now, everybody hear me. But then they get added to the prayer list. Right, right, right. And then we pray for them yes. earnestly with love yes. until they repent and turn back to God and get right and come out of that thing that's controlling Amen. them. We don't forget them. We don't throw them away. <laughs> but we do have to follow biblical protocols right. for even their own good. Yes. Because if you go have lunch with them, as the scripture says, and don't avoid them, then the enemy uses that to, to condone their actions. Well, they can see what I'm saying. Right. They agreed with me, so I must be right. right. And then that seed stays even stronger in there, and they stay bound by it even longer. Yes. Do you guys see what I'm saying? Yes. Am I saying that They've left here, we're done with them, and all the crazy stuff everybody tries to twist. Them. That's not what Pastor's saying this morning. I know some will still go out of here and say I said that, but that is not what I'm saying. I'm saying we're going to pray for them, we're going to love them, but why in the world would we keep letting them drag us down? If they, if, if, if they got to the point where either God removed them or they removed themselves, and they're still trying to cause divisions and offenses, and every time they're around them, you're around them, it's drama, 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 why in the world would you keep putting that into your ear? The scripture, the Bible even has scripture on it to deal with it. He knew it would be that big of a deal in the last days. Final instructions. Before the great move of God, this is how you deal with these that the enemy sends. Right. Now, do we still love them? Are they still a person inside there that needs saved? Absolutely, but they have to make the choice. Right. Is everybody here, Pastor, yes. this morning? Yes. Let's go on now and read some more of this scripture. For they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly, and not by good words and fair speeches, deceive the hearts of the simple. For your obedience has come abroad unto all men. I'm glad therefore on your behalf, but yet I would have you wise unto that which is good and simple concerning evil. He's like, don't complicate it. Evil's evil, is good, good. You know the difference. Don't be trying to make this hard. See what I'm saying? And the God of peace shall bring Satan under your feet shortly, and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. So he's like, God's got you. He's going to have the peace. Just don't deal with it. Don't take the faith. Because offense means what? Faith. It's a trap. To my, and then in verse 21, To us, my work fellow, and Lucius, and Jason, and Sophia, my kinsmen, salute you. Churches who wrote this epistle salute you in the Lord. Danus, my host, and the whole church salute you. Eris, the chamber of the church salute you. And Ford's brother. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Amen. So now, he's told us that. Now, we're going to look at another translation so you can uh, make sure I'm telling you right. We don't want you to be thinking I'm trying to pervert scriptures here. Brothers and sisters, I want you to be careful of those who cause arguments and hurt people's faith. They didn't try to take you out. Well, they're just going to another church. If they left one place offended, they're going to the next place offended and boys hurt, hurting people hurt people and there's nothing good happening about it. If God moves you somewhere else, he'll tell me and sometimes he does that and I want to send you out of here with blessings and I want to remain made friends with you because every one of you are family to me. When family dies and you get to say goodbye, it hurts. Yes. But there's a right way and a wrong way. But if you're, so when they leave and they're still trying to tell their junk, there's nothing good coming from it, is there? No. And if you tell them, well, I don't see it that way, what do they want to do? It's called an argument. 
They're trying to hurt your faith by teaching things that go against what you learned. What's it plainly say? Stay away from them. Did I write this? No. Did I cherry pick this for today? No. no, I did not. And I don't like talking about it either. But there's time and place for it. Amen? Amen. There's even been, and most of you have not had to hear most of this stuff, and I hear, I've heard stuff for years, and I showed you, because I don't give the enemy any footstool. There. I don't, he's always running his mouth, and Isaiah 54, 17 is true. No weapon formed against this shall prosper, and every tongue that rises against it in judgment, he shall condemn. That is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. Amen. Amen. And sometimes I don't tell you, because I can say something, and you'll go home, and you'll start believing the enemy just have something I said. It's just crazy how that stuff works, man. I'll be like, what in the world? But somebody made the accusation we were a cult. So I'm like, well, I've never seen a cult stream every service they have and have it on TV for every, everybody to watch. And, you know, then we have Spirit Riders International. It's made up of ministries all over the world. I've never seen them play nice with anybody else. Right. Yeah. Amen. That's right. And teach the truth. Yeah. And teach the truth. And our doctrine lines up to the rest of the world. That's just crazy. Yeah. But, but that's what hurting people do. People that don't, do we preach the truth here? Yes. Are we are we striving to act more like Jesus every day? Yes. Do we not, we don't play church around here. We try to be the church. Right, right. Amen. And it's real. You can follow us around everywhere we go. And you know what? People that are really hungry are looking for the truth and they're yes. going to find us. Yes. Especially in these last days. They're, you know, everybody's tired of the fake stuff. They want to see the real stuff. Right, right. Amen. Fake stuff never changed nobody, did it? No. Nope. You're here today because you found something real. Yes. Another translation says, "Right, I will beseech you, brethren, mark them that are causing divisions and occasions of stumbling. If it causes you to stumble, you mark it. Say, no, nah, man. Sorry. I'm not spending time with you. Now, I do say it comes to a point where sometimes you do grow enough in the Lord where you're influencing them and they're not influencing you. There's a reason why they're not wanting to come hang out with me. There's a reason why they're not come telling me all that stuff. Not because I'm going to beat them on the head either. I'm going to give them the truth. And they don't want to hear it. Amen? I'll have to stand Pull my chair up there. I see some people can't see me here sitting down here. Be thankful that I'm going to be standing and preaching again soon. Amen. Running all over like a wild man in Jesus' name. Amen. Contrary to the doctrine which you learn, turn away from them. That's pretty plain, ain't it? Yes. <laughs> Another translation, I urge you. That sounds pretty urgent, don't it? It's amazing how many prophetic words I give people and they believe it, their lives are blessed and things go on until I give them one they don't agree with. I don't know about that. Okay, I guess you'll find out soon. Same God that told me the other one told me that one. I, I have no, I, 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 my dog ain't in this fight. I just be obedient. And by the way, when God has me say certain things, if you think I enjoy doing some of that, you're crazy. I would just rather not myself. But I love you enough to say something. Oh, there goes another one, Joshua. Well, I tried. No, you didn't. That's what he'd say to I urge you, brothers and sisters, to keep your eye on those who are causing divisions and stumbling blocks, contrary to the teaching that you learn. Where do you learn teaching at? Church. Church, the Word of God. You come here, you learn doctrine. Am I teaching an off-store doctrine? No. We are a Bible-based church. Everything we do here is based on the Word of God. I'm not up here preaching theory or my opinion. Every bit of it is based on the Word of God. Amen. So, turn away from them. If they're not going to change, if, you know, 
today somebody watches this and they think I'm talking about them. Did I say one person's name? No. no. Am I up here picking on one person? No. I am not. If, you, if you're that upset about it, that's called the Holy Ghost convicting you. Repent and turn and come out. Amen. It's not hard. It's funner on this side. Yes. Now, enough of all that. Do you get the idea? Yes. Amos 3.3. 3. Amos 3.3. 3. Can two walk together except they agree? Deaconess mentions a message I preached 15 years ago called love. Love equals unity, which equals the uh, presence of God, which equals the power of God, which equals many people being persuaded. I still remember that anagram from 15 years ago. It was that powerful. And the enemy is still trying to stop love and unity because that's the first two things that have to happen for a move of God. Yes. Come on, are you hearing me today? Yeah. If we can't walk, get in agreement, how are we ever going to walk together and have a move of God? Now, if you're a toe, not everybody likes hanging around with somebody that's that close to toe game. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe take a shower, I don't know. But <laughs> the point is, I'm trying to be that way. Because personalities are not a spiritual thing. Right, that's important. Personalities, not everybody acts the same way. Not everybody thinks the same way. But guess what? Love covers all of that. <laughs> yes, it does. It does. Yes, it does. I'm not everybody's cup of tea. <laughs> you know, some people like a guy that talks to them for three hours to have a thing where, we're, where I'm just going to give you the truth, like a bomb, and watch it go. <laughs> I don't do it to be mean. It's how God made me. I'm like, okay, you need this. That, that, that. Oh, that should take care of you. <laughs> he could have done it a little softer, a little gentler. Well, I could have, but God didn't make me that way. Right. And he knew you didn't need that because he sent you here. Right. Right. And you tried all the other ways and they didn't work. So you got sent here. Praise God. <laughs> But do you see what I'm saying? Quit trying to say, well, I don't like that person. Maybe that person does mean more Jesus. Maybe their heart's all jacked up. Maybe they need to learn to love, but you did too at one time. Yeah. Yes, yes. And walking up, but if they start and they continue and we've dealt with them and dealt with them and they're causing divisions and they're causing contrary, nowhere does it say, Oh, just keep letting them hang out and do it forever. Paul only put up with it for three days, not 30 years. Three days Paul let a girl walk around that was demon-possessed. Some people always ask, why did he let that happen? I firmly believe God answered me and spoke to me, and he said it's because he was more worried about her soul than getting rid of the demon. Three years he let that, three years, yeah. It's, I've, done, I've done three years. I should have done three days, but... Uh, uh, but he, three days he let that girl fall around and listen to his preaching and she got filled more and more of the word of God so that when he rebuked that demon she got saved and was forever changed because right, right. he was more concerned about what he was putting in, in her than getting rid of the demon right. he was concerned about the soul and I, I've lived that except for I went a lot longer than three days I went three years, ten years, fifteen years right. and it never turns out well for me right are y'all here, Pastor, this morning? Yes. Listen, I love you. God has great things in store for Broken Change Church. We are on the cusp of something. Can you feel it this morning? Yes. The electricity as I'm speaking even. Yes. We, it, it's about to get really good, for Church. I mean, like, mind-blowing good. You can't even imagine about how good it's about to get. Yes. But we have to stay in unity. I was going to do something. Well, I'm going to. And I'm going to be honored today. Because I went from sometime, I'm sure. Ben, won't you come on up here? <laughs> I'll be gentle on an old man. Come up here and lock arms with him. Okay? 
Now, if I just try to walk and don't tell him which way we're going, it's not very peaceful for either one of us. <laughs> Over this way. No, this way. But if I say, hey, we're going to go down the aisle on, on three. One, two, three. You see how much smoother that works? Okay, we're going to stop. All right, let's go back. Why? Because we're walking in unity. Thank you. And unity is so important to the body. Yes. But people get so confused because they try to factor in personalities, which is why I always hate cliques. Because cliques are people that all think the same way, act the same way, and you're never going to have that in the body. But it takes every type to make a true body of God function. Yes. And we have to learn to walk in unity. Yes. And us that are here today, we have to learn to walk in it. And we have to learn to incorporate it with everyone that comes in. Yes. 